Thank you. I have a question for uh, Ms. Nancy Rivers. Uh, thank you for explaining a lot about your efforts in the airline industry. But as a traveler myself, but not in the airline industry, I have the experience of seeing a girl in an airport once, not knowing what to do. And I was wondering if you could give one practical piece of advice, what we could do when we don't have access to authority or yeah, where should we go if we see this? Thank you. Well, one thing you can do, um, any of you that are a passenger, anybody, is to download our tip line app. And it's tip line app. It's free on Google and iTunes. And it has access to the, uh, to the numbers that you need to call in, every, in 190 countries. So that's an, and if you see any indicators, it also is like a library of human trafficking information with links to many of the trafficking um, NGOs and latest news, et cetera, and the indicators. Yeah. Uh, this is not a question, but my suggestion to Nancy again. See, in Nepal also, we have this problem of uh, women trafficking. And uh, you probably know Anuradha Koirala. Have you heard her name or have you met her in Kathmandu? Anuradha Koirala. No, I'm, yeah, she's, I'm hoping to meet with him tomorrow. Okay, she is, uh, you, you know, she is very famous and she is also winner of uh, Women of the Year. CNN, CNN had awarded her. And she is doing very, very fantastic work in this country uh, like you have been doing in, in, in the whole world, I would, I would say. So I would request you to kindly meet her and share your experiences and to see what you, what you and the Anuradha Koirala, both of, uh, can, both of you can do for this country. Thank you. Yes, and uh, we're so excited. If you can help us get a meeting, um, we're trying to meet with many of the NGOs that are working here in Nepal to support them. Also, I wanted to say these bracelets that we wear as part of our unit, this is our uniform that we wear when we train, um, are made by trafficking survivors. And there's a red bead on each of the, the, the bracelets that represents the survivors, and we try to pay them a fair wage and um, give them hope. We're looking for ways to get them employment, get them training, et cetera. And then we want to start working in India where many of the Nepalese girls are actually going in Mumbai and Calcutta. And uh, it's amazing. It's incredible to have you all here. And uh, we feel elated, we feel blessed. Do we all agree? Yes. <laughs> Thank you very much. I wanted to say this. Joyce uh, will be supporting you. Nancy will be supporting you. All of you there will be supporting you. This is a word. Agree, uh, Chairman? Yep. Thank you. Any more? Yeah, there is. My friend from Ireland, Republic of Ireland. Yes, uh, Shane, from, I come in from Republic of Ireland. This is for Joyce. Um, I'm... Uh, uh, adventure specialist in Ireland, but I also teach uh, youngsters in the adventure industry. The question is, do you see a future for adventure activities for the likes of teenagers increasing or decreasing over, say, the next 10 years? Do you see that it's getting easier access to adventure activities, or do you think the education system across different countries is kind of squeezing adventure activities outside platforms of education. Um, hello. Uh, wow. I, I, I will talk just about Lebanon and what I saw, you know, around the world. I, I think uh, it's increasing. Uh, you know, I, I'm saying it bluntly for sure, not like... Uh, uh, but uh, because for sure it's like uh, a trend, you know, going outdoor and... Uh, doing these adventures uh, is a trend. And uh, you look cooler when you have this uh, picture on Instagram uh, uh, doing one of these extreme activities. So um, for sure it's increasing and it's good for our youngsters. In, like personally, through my uh, mountaineering project, I'm using it to have a, you know, like a, 
to have a voice and to work on different uh, levels, especially with teenagers, to go more to the mountains and use you know, the trails, especially in Lebanon. And this really helps them to have more discipline in their life and you know, like, um, leave, uh, I don't know, uh, stay away from drugs, for example. Uh, so it's, uh, I think it's increasing and it's good. And uh, we have to even uh, use it more in our education uh, system. Thank you. I don't see any hands raised, so let me try to conclude what we achieved today. Thank you, uh, Galio Science, for sharing your experiences with us and also the story of the Salden Sherpa, who is a responsible Sherpa, a champion in your words, who could lead the uh, responsible trekking in the mountains. You highlighted us by saying the meaning makes business sense and the uh, operators should be able to listen to the clients, your clients, what their choices are. Meaning through great design, the travel plan got to be very well designed and the manifesto got to be there. And among many other things, you also touched upon the distribution of benefits to the local communities and to the broader label so that everybody could own the tourism project and then it becomes a success. Nancy Rebert, you shared with us with her great work of um, Airline Ambassadors International and there was a lot of enthusiasm from the audience also on that. So you had made us very clear about how the flight attendants could make a scrutiny, gently, politely, trying to identify if somebody is being trafficked. And also, you had been instrumental in bringing out the legislations with the American government and others as well. So the, the figures that you showed to us that in reality check, many girls are being trafficked flying every day in almost every flight. That's a very scary note altogether. Dr. Sudha Sharma, you made us very clear about what are the health and safety uh, required in the uh, destinations and what are, what are the facilities available, especially in Nepal. The travel medicine is graining uh, groundwork, ground in Nepal, and you also run down with the current issues and suggested responses that the concerned authorities have to take over. Though the rescue uh, guideline on rescue, search, and medication and monitoring is there with the government. It has not been implemented to the satisfaction of the operators or the travelers as well. Kelly Dewey, you also had been very instrumental to make us explain all about your experiences, and you also try to highlight those who do good to environment, labor, and other things, they will succeed better. And yes, you are quite right on that. What you reap, that you, what you saw that you reap, that we heard this morning as well. Tourism and travelers for receiving countries like us, these are always a benefit, not a burden. And that's where the point that you also try to highlight upon. Dr. Joyce, we were excited to hear from you about your experiences of all those seven summits and also the visit to two uh, poles. And you mentioned that to us very well. Your prescription or say suggestions, the key topics to be addressed about the access management, climbers, uh, the uh, experiences, uh, don't give the permit to each and everyone who are not that knowledgeable and experienced ones, and training and awareness, which is very much required as they are going to go for a lifetime difficult job. Though they have a dream, if they are not efficient enough, they should be scrutinized. And the self-responsibility. Yes, the responsibility only can bring us, because you cannot enter into the mindsets of everybody, people have to make them, themselves prepared to do good to the environment and also the following uh, climbers, so that you don't pollute the mountains. Kathmandu Declaration is there, but it's not very well implemented, you very rightly said, and that's where the concerned authorities have to have their eye upon. So we had all five excellent presenters today, 
and we enjoyed every minute of our stay here. Thank you very much, all five of you. It was very wonderful. <laughs>